Hey, thanks for watching. Today we're talking about high pass filters. In live sound, you want to use a high pass filter on any channel where you don't specifically want to work with the low frequencies. This will end up being most of your channels for a typical live band. Reducing the amount of gain of the lower frequencies helps to mitigate buildup of low energy on stage and reduces the possibility of low end feedback. With variable high pass filters, you can clean up your mix substantially simply by stopping lower frequencies from passing through channels where you don't want them. Have you ever had trouble with bleed from a drum sub or bass amp into a hi-hat or snare drum microphone? Employing your variable high pass filter on each channel just below where the usable information is will leave only the part of the signal you do want to process on those channels. Some high pass filters are variable slope applying different amounts of cut depending on the selected frequency. This can allow for more drastic cuts at lower frequencies, usually where you want to get more aggressive to mitigate things like wind noise or mechanical noises, or less cut when you select a higher frequency for the high pass filter where you may be using it to mitigate things like proximity effect of a microphone. Another important job of the high pass filter is to increase headroom by eliminating the possibility of saturation at lower frequencies that sometimes you cannot even hear. So how does that work? Some companies locate their high pass filter before the mic preamp to avoid amplifying unneeded frequencies. It's important to understand where the high pass filter is located in your console's architecture. You want to consult the block diagram for your console to find this information out and choose how to use it accordingly. In situations where you have a high pass filter after the mic preamplifier, which is in many mixing consoles, you'll do best to apply the high pass filter or low cut on the microphone itself. This is your first line of defense against unwanted low frequencies, and choosing the correct setting at the microphone can be a critical part of establishing a good mix. If you have not spent time learning how your microphones respond with and without the high pass filters engaged, take some time to read up and experiment with the mics that you regularly use. This will really serve you well. If you simply have been grabbing a microphone that you think would be right for the job and sticking it out there, taking the time to consider and apply the filter properly can be a big step forward in your mixing. So that's it for high pass filters. Very simple, just take the time on a channel by channel basis and decide whether or not you need that low content. Most of the time you won't, you can get rid of it and clean up your mix. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, leave any questions down in the comments below, I'd love to hear from you. See you next time.